So if you're ready, then I'll roll. Yeah, please do, Jay. Go ahead. It's all yours. Uh, all right. Uh, well, good morning, everyone. How many people are on the call? Right now, 12. Well, okay. All right. Uh, you, then you. Let me begin with my uh, childhood. I you grew up as a kid in the Jalandhar. And uh, I found out uh, not too long ago, looking at uh, Sri's Facebook, uh, if somebody had commented, a fellow by the name of Vijay Vich, but that rang a bell. Vijay Vich used to be my best uh, friend when I was growing up in Jalandhar. So I sent him a message. Yes, are you the same Vijay Vich who blah, 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 gave him some details? I said, yeah. So he, he remembered me. So I knew probably Serene, his best friend and my best friend, they were the same person. Vijay Vich, remember <laughs> that, uh, Ajit? Oh, yeah, he's my tennis player, tennis partner. Uh, so I moved uh, from uh, Jalandhar to, uh, I lived, we lived in some other places in Punjab too. But we mo oh. I moved to uh, Delhi and I went to a semi-private school. It was an RS Maji school. Uh, one thing I had to admit, I was not a bright kid mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and not a talented either in the sports. So during my uh, uh, higher secondary exam, it, in the middle of the exams, I knew that I was not going to do well. I was not going to get uh, good marks to get admission in, uh, in engineering school. So uh, I talked to my dad, he said, you know, I want to drop out and uh, take another year. So he said, yeah, no, yeah, one year doesn't matter in terms of the overall life. So I dropped out of uh, the exam and, and then took the took extra year. And I barely got a, a first division and then I was lucky to get uh, admission in uh, Pilani. Okay. And so they, yeah, please ask any question, make it interactive. Well, I just want a dialogue. So if you have anything, right. please uh, go ahead and ask. Well, uh, one tidbit, Jay, you and I were neighbors in Shakti Nagar. Yeah, yeah, have... that's right, Shakti <laughs> Park, right? Probably we played there. I used to go there in evening time. Yeah, me and, too. Uh, me too, play cricket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I used to play cricket over there. <laughs> Forward, yeah. And... Um, then I moved to, uh, I joined uh, Pilani. Uh, it's, it's something I had talked to Vipin a couple of times. Uh, you, you know, when I first moved to Pilani, I had a cultural shock. You know, I could see there were two groups. One group was uh, totally different from the other one. One group was uh, English speaking, well dressed. They knew how to represent themselves. They dominated every social activity, music. You're today. talking about Reddy, right? You're talking about Reddy? <laughs> yeah, I, I would label <laughs> the group uh, debate, sports, and drama. And then the other group was, they were kind of laid back and uh, did not really participate in um, uh, any social extracurricular activities. So I could see the difference in the education. You know, really in school I came from was a kind of semi-private. It's not uh, totally Hindi kind of, you know, a little bit. You know, a mixture of school. But I could see that how the education system deprived kids of uh, nothing but uh, uh, academics. People coming out of uh, what we uh, call, uh, you know, government schools. Uh, we call them public schools here in the U.S. So the, that, that, that was a... Uh, a totally, you know, shock and how these, uh, the first group bonded well together. They seemed to have a lot of fun. And it's a compliment to, to the group. You, you know, they knew how to live life. Uh, now, uh, let me uh, move to the U.S. I came here in 1969. Uh, went to Houston. My brother used to live in Houston who passed away. And... Uh, from Houston, I had admission at uh, uh, the University of California at Long Beach. So I, I went there and uh, uh, found out when I went to the uh, the counselor's office. He, he said, uh, look, uh, 
it's a J visa. You don't get the student. We don't give student visa. With with J visa, you have restrictions. So you have to go back. So I took my suitcase from his office, <laughs> and uh, I got a call. A, a friend of mine I had met earlier. Uh, he was a one year senior in Pilani. It was some of you may know him, but his name was uh, Kamaljit Sahai. He was a Sardar, but became Mona here. So I called him up. He said, yeah, come on down to my place. I'll pick you. So I gave the flight and, you know, he came pick me up. Uh, I had admission at uh, Harvard University and they had also offered me scholarship. So I joined uh, Harvard University. By the way, Kamla Devi is from Harvard University. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and uh, what are you uh, trying? What are you trying to say? <laughs> the, what am I trying to say is that uh, hey, don't talk bad about Kamla Devi. She's a, a, from my school. <laughs> uh, there, there were a lot of Indian students over there, and uh, so I stayed for a couple of weeks at my friend's house uh, in uh, DC, and then uh, they got me a uh, room. This was a building uh, it, close to Dupont Circle, in, you know, downtown area where in the house I had a lot of different rooms and people, you know, just rented the room and we had shared bathroom. So I, they put me over there and, I, you know, rent was not much. And uh, so I, the first day I got over there, I started looking, we went out and looking for a job. I go over one block and I found a coffee shop at DuPont Circle. So I, <laughs> I asked him for a job. He said, yeah, come on down, we got a waiter job. So this is my... Basically, uh, uh, the first month in uh, in the U.S. The interesting thing happened that uh, being a waiter, I had no clue what the menu was, what the items looked like. Somebody would have say that, "Hey, give me BRT, or give me this, and give me this." I had no, give me a uh, Reuben sandwich. I had no idea. I'll just uh, write it down. And when the cook will cook, you know, he'll put the food on the counter. I didn't know which one is BLT, which one is Ruben. <laughs> the, the, the cook will shout at me, hey, your BLT is here. You know, I took on the job and did not do anything. And one day I was uh, taking the order, guy said, bring me a cheeseburger, hold the onion, hold the onion. I said, what the hell he means, hold the onion. <laughs> anyway, you know, from there I went down to do a lot of different uh, art jobs. Uh, became a uh, uh, busboy in a restaurant, bellboy in a hotel, and, and worked at Washington Post at midnight assembling uh, newspapers. So, you know, Sunday's edition. Remember, Sunday edition of uh, Washington Post to be really thick. To different sections uh, we had to assemble all these sections i had to carry all that load to put it on the the belt uh assemble them and put them on the belt and, uh, and the supervisor there was uh, so strict he'll be standing on a high podium if you take a 30 second break a 50 second break he will shout at you if you go to the bathroom and you be there for more than five minutes he'll come to the bathroom to get you out <laughs> <laughs> but the, and I got the minimum wage. I remember I was getting a dollar fifty per hour there. Uh, so I then I was working at uh, this place uh, called a Presidential Hotel. Then the, a friend of mine uh, joins me. He, he's uh, on this screen over here. Can you raise your hand? Who, who came in and got him? I got him a job at Presidential Hotel. That was Ajit Sri. Oh, so we both it, worked there. <laughs> Reluctantly, he's admitting. Huh? I said reluctantly, he's admitting. He's yeah. admitting. <laughs> Actually, Jay, Jay, you got the story wrong. It's the other way around. You got <laughs> me the job there. <laughs> no, I was there first. <laughs> yeah, you were there first. Yeah. Uh, so, it, I was going to school that time. Then uh, I got... Uh, there were a lot of Indians at that time were driving taxi in D.C. And uh, taxi license was, what they call the hack license, was very difficult to get. There was an exam. You had to know all the different areas and how much to charge the fare by, based on the 
the zone pricing. So I studied and studied and finally I got the taxi license. That was the beginning of a different life. So in the DC, you know, at that point you don't uh, buy a cab, you just uh, uh, rent a cab by a week from a company and whatever you make, whatever hour you do is uh, totally flexible. It's all up to you. So I used to make a lot of money, get up early in the morning, then go to school, even coming from school to home, I'll uh, <laughs> pick up a passenger. So, then, you know, I, I'll say something now here, uh, probably will come back later. The, I enjoyed the, uh, uh, the taxi job, you know, talk to people, it's relaxed, it's a very flexible schedule. You have a, you know, good time. You, you don't, nobody's your boss. Versus when I became, I uh, compared the life of a taxi driver versus when I became a CEO of a public company where I had a lot of responsibility, shareholder responsibility, the other responsibilities, you know, the potential lawsuit from, uh, the frivolous lawsuit from employees. To me, the taxi job was the most hap happiest job I would say I ever had. Uh, versus being a CEO of a company with uh, almost 1 billion in revenue and 3,000 employees. Uh, it's a, that, that's a personal experience, you know, how, what, the, what gives you the relaxation. And the money doesn't mean uh, everything is uh, your peace of mind. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, there was a, you know, a really good experience uh, it, it, one day. It, it, I remember this was a Saturday night. I picked up a passenger from uh, a, a national airport in Washington, like, D.C. Yeah. Okay, so, so this passenger, I started talking to him. You, you always talk to passengers. So I, I talked to him and he said, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm working on my master's thesis right now, completing my almost master's. Uh, he said, what area are you on master's? I'm doing it in telecommunication. He gives me his card. He said, can you come to my office on Monday morning at nine o'clock? So he gave me his card. His card was a law office of the Jeremiah Courtney. There was no internet at that time to check it out and what they do. So I show up uh, Monday morning. And uh, so he, he talked to me, you know, what his company does. He was a, the prominent wireless attorney in Washington, D.C. He was known uh, by everybody at the FCC uh, that Love is a Jeremiah Courtney. He is a, the, 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 he is a, a demand in wireless. So he gave me a job where I did the technical uh exhibits for these applications to Federal Communication Commission, FCC. And uh, so, yeah, I was able to get that job and I perfected that job in really no time. I was really having a, a fun. I, I would do something which uh, uh, would he would charge a $600 put, put his signature and I, I would do that in 15 minutes. So I, I was uh, really having fun, you know, you, I could get the one hour job done in 15 minutes and you know, uh, so no no pressure, nothing. Uh, from there, I he got an opportunity to go work for a consulting company in wireless. Uh, they, this was uh, uh, known as a data communication. They did the uh, system engineering for wireless or what, what we call a mobile telephone system that time used to be our manual mobile and uh, paging, you know, if you remember people at that time. So you had to design the system for different uh, uh, clients and then these clients were all over the U.S. Uh, yeah, that was a really fun place. The boss was a really, really nice. Uh, uh, it, the, the, the office was always fun. And uh, Serena, I'll remind you something here, if, yeah, if you will remember. Yeah, there was a Lebanese girl over there who worked in that office. She was a so fun, loving, always very cooperative. And we used to have a good time. We used to have parties. Yeah, we, we used to have parties. You know, she would come, she would bring her sister there. 
And yeah, I don't know if you remember the parties we used to have with the, the two Lebanese girls used to come. And uh, overall, you know, the, we uh, used to go to the office party. You know, my boss so owner had a beach house at uh, Rehoboth Beach in Delaware. We used to go to the beach house, stay over there. Then I got uh, greedy. You know, sometimes greed kills you. I got, uh, I applied for a job at a company called RCA. In uh, this job was in Pittsburgh, right outside Pittsburgh, actually. And uh, my, I was getting more, almost 50% more than I was making at the consulting company. The greed took me there, and uh, that was a disaster. When I got over there, I found out that my background was all education was in power engineering and doing the system engineering. You didn't have to deal with any components. You deal with just the system and integrate the different parts, but now had to touch hardware. And so I found out pretty soon when I got over there that they, they were a hardware wireless company. And they gave me the project to do it. And I had absolutely no clue uh, how many legs a transistor had. <laughs> and here I am, uh, they're giving me, you know, to look at the ICs, uh, integrated circuits, and, you know, do this and do this. I had no clue. It's a matter of what I got into myself. There was an Indian guy there, Prem Huja. And uh, I tried to, uh, you know, get him to help me to you know, so I could submit. I was... They, they, they gave you a fixed time to do a job. And uh, so I would take it home and, you know, read books. And it's a, not to make it, 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 my office look like I'm taking too long. And uh, this guy, he was a, my Punjabi fellow, and he he would not help me. He, he would say, say, you know, Prem, can you tell me how to do this? He said, don't go read the manual. <laughs> so, uh, Anyway, you know, I I, I start taking courses at night time to the correspondence course uh, to study about all the electronics, but uh, I, I was not getting anywhere. So I uh, I left that place and uh, joined a company in uh, New York, which was more in my field. What I did at the consulting company, uh, it was uh, the, doing the same work for the client itself, so what uh, the consultant. Did. So I became the director of engineering. They were the largest paging company in the U.S. I did uh, extremely well there, uh, uh, you know, pretty happy. And then I happened to meet uh, at one of the, the meetings, uh, this was the industry board meeting, a fellow by the name of uh, John Palmer. He was a godsend to me that that was a, a turn, another turning point. First one was the attorney I met in the taxi, then the second was uh, this fellow. And he had a company in Mississippi called Mobile Communication Corporation of America, MCCA. And uh, so I got to know him, you know, because we met several times. And he had uh, uh, applied to the FCC. Uh, his company had applied to the FCC with a very creative concept. Uh, it was an innovation, basically, to, uh, to have a nationwide system. The paging system at that point, they were totally based on local area. It will not even you know, co co cover the complete metropolitan area. So this company out of Mississippi had uh, uh, filed a petition to do nationwide paging where you could uh, page anybody anywhere in the country. So I, I joined that country. And so I, I took that concept, uh, the, his uh, concept to, re I joined there as a director of engineering. So, so I took that concept to reality work with the FCC and uh, working with the engineers who designed the whole system. Uh, and that gave a birth to what we call uh, a nationwide paging in the, in the country. We were the first one to do nationwide paging. And the status of uh, paging uh, at that point was uh, uh, there were restrictions by the Department of Justice, the artificial uh, the, based on the, the power of AT&T. AT&T had a monopoly in the U.S. on in telecommunications. They used to own all the copper, underground copper. So all the landline facilities were owned by AT&T. And 
they, they had been given the authority by Judge Green at the Supreme Court uh, to have monopoly in the U.S. on the uh, on telephony. So uh, because of that uh, AT and T monopoly, you could not technically pick up a phone direct and uh, dial somebody to pay somebody. You had to go through uh, a, a human operator that and that but that operator will push the code to send over the air. You could not send clear from directly from your uh, telephone to a computer who will uh, do the, uh, the the transmission for you. In the same way, you know, the status of mobile the telephone at that point, and my company MCC was okay. a mobile telephone. You had to, they were a manual telephone. You had to call, pick up the phone, so the operator will come on, and then she will dial the number for you. And the mobile telephone systems at that point were very limited, small coverage, very limited capacity, uh, and expensive. And uh, the, the answering service played a big part in what we call the telephone answering service or the TAS industry. Uh, so the but MCCA was also big in the uh, telephone answering service because that was part of the necessity that everybody had to go through operator. And a lot of doctors used uh, uh, telephone answering service. They, they always gave their telephone answering service number to their client and the client will call the operator and the operator will then uh, send a message to uh, the physician. And <clears throat> so the, then he got this sometime in uh, late, uh, I think 70s, mm -hmm. that the Supreme Court reversed the decision, at and decision on the, what they call the Carter. This is a famous uh, telecom uh, uh, law decision came from the uh, Department of Justice uh, where they uh, asked, uh, they, they took away the uh, monopoly in terms of uh, the connecting an instrument to at and line. So before you could not connect your computer, your uh, any, uh, any terminal, any, uh, even, a, even a telephone, your own telephone, you had to get it from at and you could not connect directly to the AT equipment. So when Judge Green, uh, they, they, they modified this restriction, that opened up the whole telecommunication area. That was the birth of the innovation. Now people could connect computer to computer without uh, restriction for uh, the at and uh, They could, that was the start of uh, electronic transmission between uh, two parties directly and also that it helped change the infrastructure of uh, paging. You now people could call somebody's number already I could call your number and uh, it will come directly to you I could leave your voice message you will get it uh, on a car telephone could dial the number what we call the direct dial system. So my company was you know we were able to then by the equipment team for the switches uh, to accomplish that. So that, that was a major decision in, uh, uh, in the wireless. The other big decision was uh, the AT&T monopoly was uh, destroying the long distance market. If you, because of monopoly, nobody could offer a long distance. The telephone companies, if you go outside your, uh, local area go 10 miles the car was so expensive they they would charge you really they were uh, uh, gouging the market with uh, the they, they, the car, there was no cost difference the long distance market it was totally the at and market and they were so controlling it and making money on that a friend of mine uh, uh actually both friend from me he was from uh uh, the, uh, he was from Lebanon, actually. Too. So he, his name was, uh, he passed away though, Jack Gokun. Jack Gokun, he uh, was uh, one of the founders of uh, MCI, actually, then he left MCI, cashed out. And uh, he and I were having a dinner at a restaurant, in, at Lebanese restaurant in Washington, D.C. So he was start telling me what he was doing. He had to find, he, he found a way 
to bypass ATA2 instruction. So he, he set up a first long distance network between uh, Kansas City, Ajit, uh, and I think somewhere, what, Topeka or somewhere, not, not too far from there, where yeah. he could uh, connect his switch in Kansas City to then go over his wire, wireless system, microwave. It was a microwave system and uh, connect with the switch at the other end. And he took that to the FCC and he said, hey, look, I'm not using any AT&T facility for the long distance. I'm using a, a, a microwave system. So finally, the Department of Justice allowed him to offer the long distance. And that was the birth of a company called MCI. MCI did the long distance market via microwave bypassing the at and network. That changed the long distance market completely. What would cost you before $5 for a call 20 miles away from your home? No, hey, this guy would sell it for 20 cents, 30 cents. So that opened up the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the at and market. And then later on, it says, you know, this guy opened up uh, the rule change that the you know, uh, at and allowed uh, resellers, you know, they put off uh, so the landline uh, long distance. So that, that was the background on, you know, the history of uh, what uh, wireless did to uh, uh, the daily life of human being in uh, the long distance market. Okay, so back on, uh, you know, uh, my own. Uh, so we, we did the nationwide paging with, at MCCA. And at that point, uh, the... There was another thing uh, coming up. It was known as the cellular. So I, I was uh, at the board of uh, the I was a trade association called the Personal Communication uh, Industry Association. Uh, I was at the board of that uh, the tra tra trade association, and uh, the the, the, uh, the members of this association they were providing mo mobile telephone. These were all. Uh, manual type, non-cellular type uh, telephone with a limited capacity, and we all wanted to get into cellular. But the problem came in uh, at and again. So we went with the first of all with the FCC and creating the cellular uh, spectrum, and then uh, they, they, then the rules had to be established. at and took the position again that uh, they should be the only one to offer cellular in the country because they have the monopoly from uh, the Department of Justice to provide the telephone service. So I got involved heavily in terms of creating what we call duopoly, that each market will have two licenses. One would be the at and a, 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 a wireline, we call them license, and the other will be the, the, uh, the, the uh, well, what will be wireline, the other would be the uh, uh, the non wireline So we uh, we worked very hard at uh, uh, having the rule change. Uh, I participated in uh, the congressional hearings uh, at the uh, Senate and uh, the House both. Uh, luckily, the head of the Senate Telecommunication Committee was uh, someone very well known to us, uh, Trent Lott from Mississippi, who was a tennis partner for of uh, my chairman, founder, my co-founder, my, actually my co-founder also. And uh, <laughs> he he used to, you know, I, I knew him well because we, we, we used to go to Washington, D.C. a lot. We had a corporate place, so he used to hitchhike with us many times. So one day, <laughs> interesting thing happened. I took a delegation of our industry, about 18, 20 people, to uh, meet uh, Trent Lott, who was the head of the telecom uh, committee, Senate Telecom Committee. So I go into Trent Lott's office. So he had a huge lobby. And as I go in, a, a girl gets up from my desk and comes and says, Jay, and give me a big hug. She was a daughter of my chairman, uh, John Palmer. You know, I knew the girl very well because we. She grew up, uh, you know, uh, known her. And uh, here are the 18, 20 people from the industry. They say, look, his connections at the at the senator's office. When the girl comes up and gives me a big hug. <laughs> uh, it's a, but, so uh, eventually, you know, 
our industry was able to get the uh, uh, monopoly broken, at and monopoly broken, uh, there were two licenses issued. And uh, we were involved in the, what we call the first round of applications, which was a 30 top market in the US. Uh, so my company participated in the several markets, Houston and Los Angeles, were our two prime markets. And uh, there were 13 applicants in uh, Los Angeles, including uh, some of the big companies, wow. you know, the, the general GM was there, right, that's through their sub uh, shoes, uh, uh, and a lot of other big companies. Uh, Western Union was there. Uh, our, our application, uh, the, uh, the license was to be issued on the basis of uh, quality of the application, quality of the design. Uh, of the application. And out of 13 companies, uh, our company well, won the license uh, for Los Angeles. And we also work, uh, well, won the license for Houston. By the way, one thing, you know, the uh, personal achievement, the LA is the largest market in the US, the cellular market in the world. And the FCC application has a my signature on the design of original LA system. So we, it, it, that changed the perspective of our company. The LA license was very valuable. Uh, Bell South, by the way, had invested uh, uh, money in, uh, in our company at that time. They were 15% uh, owner. We were a public company. And uh, that, that got them interested in uh, buying uh, MCCA. So they bought the uh, MCCA in uh, 1985. Uh, the, the deal was about uh, $1.2 billion. Uh, so we, it was a, a stock deal. And uh, at that point, uh, we, the, the, we, the uh, FCCA had a nationwide system, national paging system in development. <clears throat> so they could, under the, the, uh, the, with the restrictions from the Department of Justice, they could not offer nationwide paging. They could not cross the what they call the, the telephone companies, the latter part, the local area, the local area, uh, <laughs> local area transport uh, exchange. So they could not offer. That's what they they, had, they spun off the the nationwide business to national business paging business, and we had also air to ground uh, telecommunication system for general aviation. To this new company we found, uh, John Palmer and I, we we, we called it uh, MTEL, but we changed the name to later on to SkyTel. So the situation at that point was we had uh, launched nationwide paging system, so we wanted to take it global. So uh, I went around the globe, uh, they, they had joint ventures in a lot of different companies with uh, different countries. A uh, notable one was uh, the joint venture with Singapore Telecom. Uh, yeah, they became a partner. We have they created a new uh, partnership where we will develop the global uh, paging for the Asian market. So one of the responsibilities I took was to get a license in India. So I visited India to get the license, met with the uh, the, the, the PTD, the Post Office, Telegraph, whatever, the, the FCC equivalent. And uh, the spectrum we needed was a uh, unused, uh, uh, it's assigned to military, but uh, unused. So uh, we hired a consultant there who took me to meet with uh, Sam Petroda. Do you, you, you remember Sam Petroda? He, 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 so uh, he, he was a, a very powerful guy who worked for, was the right-hand man for uh, Rajiv Gandhi in, uh, in the telecom issues. So he was helping us to get the license. One day I went to see him and he, he said, Jay, you know, I got bad news for you. He said, what? He said, uh, I'm helpless now because uh, Rajiv Gandhi had been thrown out and he had lost his power. So I can't do anything for you now. So we were not able to get license in India, but we were able to get license in Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, Hong Kong, a lot of different uh, countries that we had the joint ventures here. Also in South America, we were in Mexico and uh, Brazil and a lot of other countries. So we, we call that the, you know, the global uh, interest. We, we had the minority interest in each country. So I was on the board of uh, all these countries. So I was constantly traveling to different countries to attend their the board meeting. Uh, well, you know, I also got involved in a new technology at that time called uh, 
the communication directly to the satellite. So I've become involved in a, in a filing application at the FCC for what they call the mobile satellite communication. So we filed an application. There were a lot of different companies. We all eventually settled to get a, a license. The company became American Mobile Satellite Corporation. And I was uh, the first chairman of the board of that company. And I took that company to IPO for up, almost $600 billion. Uh, so we also we had the the one interesting thing I'll, I'll tell you is that you know when you were getting the investment through this IPO, I was a uh, I was having a meeting with the chairman of a Singapore Telecom International in Washington D.C. on our joint venture. So I told him about uh, you know what uh, we were doing at uh, Magnolia Satellite, and our company had put in I think twenty billion, and he said do you have the prospectus? Said, yes, I gave him the prospectus. Yeah, we broke off at lunch, and then we were going to have dinner at Georgetown. So I see him at Georgetown. He says, uh, "I say, you know, did you read, uh, Doctor Sung? Did you read the prospectus?" He says, "Is your are you in it?" He says, "Yeah." He says, "Okay, put me in for fifty million dollars." The man, the you know, Singapore Telecom had so much money, he didn't even consult anybody. Took the uh, prospectus from me, and in six hours, committed $50 million to American mobile satellite. So those are, you know, all days. So, but by the way, they're coming back. Uh, no, somebody has to be mute. Somebody is talking and not muted. Please mute. Okay. No, I'll, Jay, I'll, 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 Jay, Jay, I have a suggestion as you go along with your uh, narration. It's very interesting. If you could just mention which year you are in in the process, that would be helpful in the development. Okay, yeah, sure. And so so Jay, this was Jay, now... Jay, 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 time out, time out. Yeah, I yeah. just want to let you know that you have about 22 minutes left. So Okay, I'll go very fast. Now, we are in 95. Uh, we launched our title to where uh, that was the birth of. We were the first one to, in the country to offer uh, text messaging. So we are known in the industry uh, who created uh, text messaging. It, it was the first time you could send and receive text messages. We created the language, you know, like uh, LOL, those kind of things. We were the first one to do that. So the, this is in 95. And uh, in 95, uh, I was uh, lucky to get uh, an award from uh, U.S. Uh, Vice President Al Gore for lifetime contribution to the wireless industry. And uh, also several other awards, uh, uh, the Personality of the Year by our trade magazine, uh, Chairman's Award from our industry association, uh, cite a uh, RCA, a sort of a citation from uh, Radio Club of America. So this thing was a big deal. And uh, we launched our system in 95. We raised about uh, five, six, seven million dollars to build the nationwide system. We were in 250 markets uh, providing two way messaging. And with this, let's see if I can uh, go to my video and uh, launch. Uh, uh, show you a video. Please. Okay. Oh, I need to go back. Yeah. Okay. Good. Oh, it's so oh, I can't see Serena. I can see it by Zoom. Uh, the share button. Uh, okay, share it. Got it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Great. Oh, what happened? Yeah, just click on that video, it'll, it'll start. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. yeah. Much younger, Jay, in that video, looks like. What year is this, Jay? 95. Okay. Okay, I... Just click on that video you got there. Click on it. Where? On the video itself. 
It's a YouTube, right? Yeah, it's a YouTube. Yeah, just click on that video. Okay, here, let me go back here so you can get it. I knew that okay. was going to... There's a link, link there. You can click on the link also. Yeah. I think it's got yeah. it. Can you there see it? Go. Yeah, yes, yeah, we yes, can, we can see it. it. Great. This is our SkyTel two-way launch in uh, New York City. There's no sound. There's supposed to be sound. Yeah. Right? You don't hear any sound? No, no sound. Oh, yeah. without sound is uh, no good. Yeah, that's the problem with Zoom. <laughs> okay, I'll stop it. But you can you can tell us, you can talk us through it if you want. Yeah, yeah basically you here we are saying that one before it should be all one way communication. People have yeah. to find a telephone to return a phone call if somebody would page you. No, right. this is a, we are creating a new industry for what we call the two way to it is. Versus uh, what the, the tradition has been one way. Uh, uh. That's our product, by the way. We had, what we had back in '95. It changed since that. Just the pagers, right? That was all, all one way, obviously, right? Yeah, pager. <laughs> who is the speaker here? That's John Palmer, who was a, a, a my partner, co-founder, and chairman of the board. Oh, okay. And I was the CEO of the and vice chairman. Got it. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, I got young Jay. Yeah. Who's this guy? I've seen him before somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good, Jay. Yeah? At least uh, you can read the write-up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's a lot. Sure. All right. Hey, somebody is uh, unmuted and talking in the background. Please mute if you have somebody in your room talking. Thank you.
Okay, I, I won't show the the rest of it. Yeah, some commercial. The one commercial I had uh, was uh, the commercial we played at uh, most of the major networks, uh, CNN and some of the NFL games. Uh, that commercial won the the uh, the uh, was the, uh, among the top ten uh, 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 given the award uh, in, in advertising. Uh, so I, I won't uh, go there. So. I'll go a little bit faster now here. So, so Jay, I, I interrupt you with one question. Yeah. Please don't go very fast. Take your time. If we run out of time, we can schedule another Zoom. So don't rush. Okay. But I have All a right. question for you. Jay, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. You know, what, your uh, life story is very interesting. And obviously, you're one in a million kind of guy and what you have accomplished. But from a, my curiosity is, you know, wireless seem to have come very easily to you. Whereas earlier, you might have even in high school, you said you struggled a little bit and you repeated a year and that was a little bit tough for you. But somehow in wireless, you, what do you attribute why you were so successful in wireless? Because when you, when, you, when you went to RCA in Pittsburgh, whatever that job was, you didn't do too well and you came back. So it seems like there is a link between you and wireless. What do you attribute that to? Okay, yeah, I'll say that. I think uh, sometime uh, you'd rather be lucky than smart. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, okay. I, 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 I had a breakthrough. You know, the first breakthrough was in meeting this attorney in the in the taxi. Sure. That's what was the beginning of uh, my uh, the wireless ex experience. And number two, uh, I, I got so lucky meeting uh, John Palmer, who was the yeah, the CEO chairman of uh, mobile communication of the company prior to Skytel, where I joined in at a much lower level, and within six months I became the number two person. The guy, that guy, that person, uh, he, he had uh, faith in me and uh, trusted me, and uh, you know, living in Mississippi, you know, which is uh, he, he, most of you in the U.S. know is uh, the a backward and conservative state and foreign from India going in, and I was basically first Indian there. So then eventually we, by the time we sold the company, we had close to 125 Indian engineers in that company, mostly in the software side. So he gave me that, uh, the, uh, the, the power, uh, the confidence, and uh, believed in me. So, you know, I would say that uh, he was uh, uh, the, the number two who really helped me get there where I... And thirdly, I would say when we did the... We were very creative in um, the, our two-way design. There was a breakthrough in technology, what we did. Uh, the, For example, one of the reasons... We, oh, we, we got the Pioneer uh, license from the FCC for, on our concept of technology. The, the, some of the, the innovations we had was... Uh, going from one way to two way. The one way system, they were just one there's no guarantee. You don't know if the person got the message and there are no acknowledgement. What we did, if you, without two way, you got the acknowledgement. If you didn't get the message, it's stored and forward. And right. by the way, uh, our patent still holds a good. Uh, Apple, uh, they, they, I'll tell you that in a minute, about <laughs> the patent and Apple and Samsung and those things. I'll come back to that. So anyway, so, Going back to the, the, the capability to have the acknowledgement, capability to send messages. And the most important was when you send a text message, it takes up the capacity of the airtime of your spectrum. So we, the, the technology at that time, when we started working on two-way, was uh, 800 bits per second transmission rate. So we created new technology, new transmission format, new protocol. We took took it up to 24,000. Mm -hmm. So we multiplied that by, you know, so and so to create the capacity for a nationwide system. So I would say that the breakthrough was there, that we had a lot of smart people there. A lot of smart people. I, I was not the guy who created that, but there were people there much smarter than I am. 
you know, I was driving it, you know, telling me what we need. We need a 30 day battery life in a pocket type device, 30 day battery life for a device. You don't have to charge it. So I was directing those. I was negotiating with the, the, the companies, the Motorola, the NEC, and Panasonic, and those kind of things, uh, getting the devices made. But the smart people were, you know, there was a fellow by the name Masood. He was from Iran. Brilliant, brilliant guy. Uh, you know, you know, I ended up getting the, some of the credit and the industry award, the national awards. Actually, the guy who deserved more than me was uh, this fellow Masood, the Iranian guy. Sometimes, you know, people at the top, they get the credit for somebody, real work done by some other people. So th th that's the case here. So uh, did, 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 that, uh, did I ask you a question, Vijay? Yeah, thanks a lot, Jay. I appreciate okay. it. Jay. So Skytel, Jay. you know, became... Hi, someone else has a question, I think. Jay, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Quick question. You explained the practical breakthroughs that you made in two-way communication, etc. Now, for somebody like me, can you please explain what was the breakthrough? Like, I mean... At that time, you had landline communication, you had one-way paging communication. So what was the technological breakthrough that you guys made which uh, enabled this two-way communication? Okay, the, the, the four back, uh, I'll give you four. Okay. Number one is uh, creating a national system which uh, you don't have to notify anyone if you're leaving your home market you could leave in kansas or going to toronto or anywhere you don't have to tell anyone where you're going you know keeping in mind i'm talking about before cellular days said the cellular even after cellular came for many many years they did not have the roaming capability what we call seamless roaming capability so we provided the breakthrough in in having seamless roaming to an end user. So you leave your home market, you go anywhere, uh, you don't have to notify. When you go, it's automatically delivered to where you are. It's a location independent. Second one was, it was a guaranteed delivery. Let's say if you are traveling, you're in an airplane, uh, going to your destination, somebody sent you a message, you're naturally in an airplane, you're not going to get it. But in our case, we developed the technology that if you did not get the acknowledgement back from the recipient, the message is stored, stored and forward. When you get to the your new market, the, your device will send notification. Yes, I have arrived in the um, in the coverage area. Please send me any stored messages you have. So we what we call store and forward guaranteed delivery. Third thing we did was, do you need the capacity for the system to do on a national basis? You don't want to have limited capacity that you have not too many pay, pay users on it. So we created the you know, protocol, the transmission, which went to 20 to 30 times faster than the, what the industry standard was. And fourth was, with two-way communication devices, you know, the battery, there, there were some big devices before. You would have to put your phone to charge it every night. We said, no, we don't want that. We want a pocket-sized device, which will have a AAA battery, which will last at 30 days. So those are the main breakthroughs uh, we had in our uh, implementation. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so, you know, Skytel became a, the household name. We, we were everywhere. We were on the CNN commercial. You pick, uh, you've done on the telephone, you, uh, your TV, you'll see us. And uh, we, in every federal government agency was uh, required to have Skytel agent. Uh, all FBI agents, for example, they carried uh, a Skytel agent. Uh, we had a strong... Uh, federal government group in, uh, in Washington, D.C. And uh, by the way, uh, uh, Bill Clinton and Al Gore, uh, they both carried title. When uh, Al Gore was a 
selected by Bill Go by Bill Clinton to be his running mate. Al Gore was in New Orleans, and so Scott, Bill Clinton sent message to Al Gore via Skype pager, announcing him that he was the running mate. And uh, we were in a lot of movies, uh, uh, several uh, James Bond movies. Uh, James Bond uh, carried our product. Uh, if you recall the movie Top Gun, Tom Cruise uh, had our product in that movie. So we, we were well known uh, in the country. And uh, so we grew Skytel uh, to almost 1 million subscribers. And we got up to 1 billion, in, almost in about 900 sub million in revenue, close to a billion. At that point, uh, you know, cellular was uh, picking up in terms of they they were developed with uh, smartphones. So this is all pre-smartphone I'm talking about, and uh, the cellular was also looking into providing the roaming capability. So you could leave one market and then uh, receive your mess the message in the other market, where uh, you, you know without having to pay long distance. So, you know, before in the early days of cellular. If you left your market and went wherever, all the you will get arrested, but they charge you long distance. So, but they were going more into what seamless, and they would. So we saw some, uh, you know, every technology has its timetable. So we saw that, that uh, we got competition coming in cellular. So we uh, sold our company. Skyter to MCI Worldcom. MCI Worldcom was the, the leading telecom company in the U.S. They were the darling of uh, the U.S. Uh, stock market. The MCI stock was uh, uh, going, uh, doubling up uh, every six months. And uh, so we sold uh, 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 our company Skyter to MCI Worldcom for $1.9 billion. It was all stock deal. That was the, the good news. The The well, there's bad news uh, to go with it. Uh, so the, now let me come to the good and bad news. What year uh, are we in now, Jay? What yeah? year are we in now? When you sold okay, the, we sold the Skytel in uh, '99. We we signed the agreement uh, letter of intent uh, in May of '99. We had to go through the regulatory process, get the approvals from. Uh, Department of uh, the, the SEC and uh, FCC. SEC is by the Security and Exchange Commission because we are a public company. And uh, we got the approval and then we closed it in uh, November of uh, 99. Great. Thank you. Hey, Jay, Jay, can we open up the questions now? Because we got 10 o'clock almost. So let's okay, open right, up. Go ahead. Question, answer, whatever. Can well, I ask? Uh, let, let me say one thing. You know, I don't want to mislead here. The Skytel is 1.9. Uh, we sold it with big money. Uh, you know, it, it was a public company. Uh, but Skytel, after uh, we closed it in the uh, end of 99, early 2000, they had a bombshell event. Uh, they they got caught into some accounting fraud like uh, Enron. And uh, when they... It was all uh, stock deal. So what I got from uh, the transaction was stock deal, and because of they had eventually filed bankruptcy that company, and uh, uh, all my stock basically went into uh, that uh, bankruptcy court. So I really didn't get anything out of that. Okay, go ahead. The question. Hey Jay, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. yeah go ahead, Christian. Oh, yeah, Jackie. Ahead. Uh, you want to come say hi? Hey, Hey, well, Jackie just walked in, my wife. Hi, Jack. Hey, Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Good to see you. Hey, Jackie. <laughs> Serene, man. Serene, man. You know some of these Dancing. people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you remember your dancing partner, Serene? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, Doc. Doc, and, uh, where is Doc? Not gone. He has to go, yeah, go at 9 yeah. Doc, yeah, uh, Doc and Jackie won the... Uh, yeah, Serene is there. Uh, yeah, yeah, Serene. And, uh, Doc and uh, Jackie won the award at the group in dancing. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. I, don't know, I don't know if I could do it now. <laughs> 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 so you're so 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good, good to see you, Jackie. Good to see you too. Yeah. Have okay. All right. So. Uh, All right, Jay. Hey, Jay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you. You have talked too much technical, and you're a multi-millionaire guy. I heard. I don't know if it is true or not. You are kidnapped at a gunpoint. Yeah. Well. Okay. That was. I was going to cover the. The, uh, the bad point. Let me go through that. That's it. Last, Jackie, you know. No, 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 no. I don't want you to go. No, I don't want you to hear. Yeah, she, she, I don't want to hear the kidnap. Uh, yeah, close it off, please. Yeah. Yeah, you are part of what you don't want to hear it again. Okay, this is uh, in 94, January 94. Uh, I, uh, there's a, a well-known uh, uh, venture capital firm here, uh, Kleiner Perkins. I don't know if somebody knows the name. Uh, Kleiner Perkins uh, was an investor in the SkyTech, along with uh, Microsoft, uh, uh, Bill Gates personally, and Paul Allen. They had all invested uh, personally in the company. And by the way, I signed the start, start sales for uh, Bill Gates and uh, Paul Allen. Uh, so, okay, Kleiner Perkins, uh, I was a part of their venture capital firm, a family. So, we found a company in, uh, uh, we bought a company in actually in uh, San Jose, in, uh, who, uh, they, were in the, they were developing the, the wireless two-way devices. So, I was on the board of that company uh, in, in San Jose, and I left uh, San Jose to come to, come back to Mississippi. So I got uh, to Mississippi around, uh, I think, 8.30, 9 o'clock. So it was my habit at that point to, you know, call, I when I got to the airport, call Jackie that, uh, you know, I, I, I'm coming home. So when I called home, uh, uh, I found that uh, it took a lot, some time to answer. And uh, the sound was, uh, I could tell from something was wrong. And then I come home and... Uh, Oh, come to the garage, go to the laundry room, and uh, go to the kitchen area. Uh, we, we had this small dining table at the, what we call the, the kitchen dining area. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, somebody, you know, comes from behind and uh, put something on the, uh, on the back of my head. He says, uh, 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 I got a gun. And uh, so I thought that was uh, somebody we knew, a friend of uh, my son who used to kid with me all the time. He says, get out of here, Jason. He <laughs> says, no, <laughs> no. He says, uh, he, he, he turns the light on. He, the, from there, I could see the our living room. Uh, and uh, I see uh, my wife and my daughter, they were both uh, uh, tied up. And... Uh, uh, and blindfolded. He says, you know, look, uh, it's a kidnap. So from there, you know, I, I realized what the situation was. And uh, so he, he was still on my back. He said, I don't want you to see my face. If I, you see me, then I'll have to kill you. Keep your head down. And so we said, sometime, you know, he'll put his uh, mask on. Sometimes he he won't. Uh, so we sat down in the in the area. So he, he, he said, "You know, I, I need the money." Uh, he, he, he said, "He, he said, uh, what happened is uh, I had sold some uh, Skytel stock. We exercised the stock option, and I sold for about uh, one and a half million dollars. And uh, so our local newspaper." You know, you when you sell as a public company, you start, sell the stock for a public company. You had to file the, what you call the SEC Form Four with this uh, with the Securities and Exchange Commission. So the shareholder know that the uh, CEO of a company is selling this stock. So the local newspaper picked up that and they put in the newspaper my my picture and how much money I sold the stock for. It was the local paper. And so he knew what money I got selling the stock. He said, I want that money. 
and uh, so so I, I I told him, look, you, you you know, I'm not going to talk to you. It's a, between you and me, man to man, uh, you need to uh, untie them. You know, you let them go. So he and I negotiated that, you know, he's okay, he untied them. So otherwise, I'm not going to negotiate with you. So he and I talked that day for an hour, and uh, he kept on uh, banging his gun, saying, you know, look at my gun, you know. And uh, so... Then I basically see he wanted one and a half million, so I said, okay, I'll give you that, but I got to pay tax on that, you know, in the 50% bracket. So he and I agreed on $750,000 amount. They said that I'll give him that. So he wanted that money, so he took us to the master bathroom, uh, the, uh, the master bedroom bathroom, which was a large size uh, bathroom. And uh, so there was a closet, she walked in closet there. So put uh, my daughter and uh, Jackie over there and he and I was sitting at the, uh, in the main bathroom area. So he was uh, working with me negotiating. And so when night went on and uh, uh, so we, how we were going to get the money out of her. You had to sell the money uh, through a brokerage company and have it delivered back. Uh, and uh, at about three o'clock at the night, uh, he and I, it's a, you know, he and, I, he and I talked all night. We, 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 I never got uh, really off offensive with him. I just uh, maintained my calm and a normal conversation. He, uh, we, we said, you know, I, it, it, he said, uh, what, I said, what name do I call you? He said, call me Kenny. So I started calling him Kenny. That was not his real name. So about uh, 3, 30, 4 o'clock, we, we went to the kitchen. We made coffee. And... Uh, so we were coming out of the kitchen, going toward the master bedroom, there's a hall there. And before you go to the hall, the living room, there was a big knife sitting on the counter. He was uh, ahead of me by three feet. And I'm uh, behind him, I see the big knife over there. And a uh, thought came to my mind that I you pick up that knife and, uh, you know, kill him. When I can hear that maybe if he doesn't die, I don't kill he's going to shoot me, he's going to shoot my family. So I, I didn't do it. So then we go in, we have coffee. And uh, so uh, at 6 30, yeah, when the um, uh, brokerage office opens, I call them, you know, to transfer, earn money in the money market fund uh, to transfer it to uh, my uh, bank. And uh, this guy was so stupid, he wanted everything in a single, a small bills. And uh, it, uh, then, uh, uh, he he was well, he told me to get it, but so I when I called my bank said you know we need this much money, and uh, in small bills, so the bank uh, said got suspicious, you know and, you know this this much money seven fifty thousand dollars in small bills, so well, they get so they uh, around uh, so we had to wait till the money got delivered to the bank, uh, you, you know the the brokerage company could deliver to the to the bank and uh, <laughs> so he wanted to eventually first to uh, take uh, my family as a hostage and uh, uh, I go get the money I say no I, I'm not going to do that if you take you let them go uh, that they, they'll get they'll get the money I'll stay with you so he so I was busy you know, he blindfolded me and uh, uh, so he, my what my daughter and my wife, they went to the bank and he, he got in the car. Uh, uh, in the, in another car, you know, he, uh, he, we, uh, we were in the, uh, my daughter's car. Okay, uh, one thing I forgot to mention to you, the, how he got in, side the house. Uh, about uh, 6 37 when it turned dark, my daughter went out of the house, to opened the garage to get a book from the car. Her car was parked in the driveway. And this guy was hiding behind the bush. So when she tried to get inside the house, he followed up with the gun. So this is how, we, you know, he got in. So anyway, so to cut this story short, that my, my daughter and my wife, they go to the bank. And and he had told my wife uh, that if you uh, call police, uh, you know, I'm going to... Jackie, please go. Okay. Uh, so he he will have to he'll he'll kill me. 
uh, if uh, she calls the police. So she goes to the bank and uh, so she, uh, the bank already knew, oh, he, 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 uh, he wanted uh, Jackie to take big bags with her to get the money. Uh, well, he wanted to get, get a suitcase, you know. He said, well, he, he's stupid, you know. They, they, they will know that uh, he, he, nobody takes money that from suitcase. So uh, he said, you will uh, get me killed. You, they will call the police. So he, then he eventually agreed to give him some other bags. So anyway, when she gets over there, she's surrounded by the FBI. They had already called her. The bank had already called the FBI. Had, uh, and they wanted her to break her down to tell her about what's happening. So she she won't tell them because she was afraid that the guy is going to kill me. And uh, finally, uh, it got to a point that uh, she had to tell them, you know, this is the situation. And uh, so the bank, uh, in the meantime, uh, the FBI notified, uh, uh, they knew, uh, Haley Barber, I don't know if you remember the name Haley Barber, he was the chairman of the RNC, the Republican Party. And he was a uh, close friend of mine and also on my board. So FBI called uh, Haley, say, hey, we got your, uh, your friend has been kidnapped. So Haley had uh, uh, worked, uh, and uh, another board member was Vic Razor who was the financial chair for the Democratic Party. Uh, so uh, Vic, uh, the Haley card, uh, also Vic Razor was the chair of the financial party and Bill, Bill Clinton was the president. And uh, Vic Razor and Bill Clinton, they were both very close friends. Uh, so this, anyway, so with the Haley's help and uh, you know, Vic, Vic Razor said they called the FBI. They, they talked to the FBI director, director Free, said, look, uh, it's a corporate, uh, corporate kidnapping. Uh, we want uh, the FBI to involve. So uh, FBI director got himself involved himself personally. So they put a lot of resources in, in, in this uh, case. Uh, it, it, so FBI then they sent in uh, uh, three planes, uh, which were kind of low. No, 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 please, Jack, they were planes. The, the, the low noise planes, and they were helicopters also later on. So these low uh, noise planes, low low level flying, and uh, one came from DC, one came from Birmingham, one came from Dallas uh, to track the uh, the vehicle. And uh, so it took a long time for the FBI to count all the bills that they also get the number of uh, every. every a, every a dollar bill and so here he was getting anxious i was in the car with him driving around blindfolded all this time and he would put his gun on my hair so if i do anything funny remember you know i i, I didn't know what it was because i had you, you can imagine you're sitting in a car for hours blindfolded not knowing what's going on where you are but he'll remind me of the gun so we it took a long time to get this, all the process, all the FBI resources, the planes, the carrying the money, and he was getting very anxious, very anxious. So he was parked somewhere, and uh, he, he told me, yeah, he was parked in this uh, church parking lot. So told me, church was I don't that's a huge parking lot. He said, you know, it's dark. He said, he said, see, you know, it's already eight, eight o'clock. You know, you're uh, uh, my wife, uh, you know, she's uh, she's calling the police or whatever. You know, I'm going to kill you. Uh, so, so they were back and forth co with calls between uh, uh, Jackie and to my car cell phone, and uh, you know that they try and convince him. The FBI was listening to everything that you know they they making the money arrangement. They have to do this. They have to do this, and. Uh, uh, so we were waiting in the car, in the, this parking lot, and then the, in the parking lot, he could see there's a donut shop right uh, maybe 300 yards away from the parking lot, and the police car pulled into the, the donut shop. And uh, so he says, oh, there's a cop, you know, well, he's got a cop. He, so he's uh, so I'm watching him, he says, if he comes in this direction, and uh, so I'm going to kill you first, then I'm going to kill the cop. 
So the car pulls out of the parking lot. He starts coming. Then he <laughs> eventually, you know, doesn't come inside the parking lot. He was edge close to the edge of the parking lot. So, you know, by that, that time I had the gun over here, you know. So, but, you know, the, the escape. So then, uh, you know, they deliver. Uh, they, they we make arrangement where to meet for the money delivery. Uh, so uh, my wife and uh, Jackie, they, they, the FBI uh, uh, agent was in, in back of a car hiding. Uh, and uh, so when we, when we got close to the, the drop up point, the FBI agent jumped out of the car, and uh, so we he got the he got the money. And at this time, uh, he, he, evidently, uh, everything was set up in terms of the tracking. There were planes and a uh, lot of other, uh, maybe hundreds of uh, FBI cars, state police, uh, and the Jackson police. Uh, so he was surrounded. So he, he said, okay, you know, the deal was, after he gets the ransom money, he is going to drive me around for 15 minutes. And if everything is safe, then he will let me go. So he's uh, now driving around to make sure that he's not being followed or chased. And uh, uh, he, he loses uh, the direction. He goes in some inside street and he goes into drive with him backing out. Say, Kenny, are you lost? He says, yeah, I'm lost. That's okay. Tell me what street you are on. Maybe I can help you here. So he gives me a street name. Uh, it's inside street. I said, you know, you know, Kenny, I don't know that. He said, uh, uh, that's okay, you know, Kenny, our deal was, after you get the money for 15 minutes, you're going to let me go. Then he says, uh, I can't let you go here. You don't know where you are. <laughs> I said, that's the least of my problem. <laughs> I don't know. He said, yeah, you don't know where you are. I can't let you out here. Then he and I, I both... Uh, Cracked up. We both left. <laughs> he realized what I said and not realized what he said. He, said. he cracked up. By the way, he did the car. He and I talked for what eight hours. What I what he was going. To, he was seeking my advice and what to do with the money. Uh, he, you know, we <laughs> do this. He was going to uh, go. So we we agreed when he was going to go to California. He was going to California and. Uh, you know what? Well, do those days you could buy McDonald's for seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. So he, he and I talked about McDonald's. He was going to buy McDonald's in California. <laughs> so we talked all the way. You know, talked about different business plans, what he could do, and uh, so uh, so then finally he did, uh, goes to the uh, parking lot, grocery parking lot, uh, which was not too far from my house, where he was going to drop me. And he had called his sister uh, to meet him at the, the grocery parking lot to pick him up. So when the FBI, they were tracking the car. Oh, by the way, the F, he got out of the uh, one time to make a phone call from the, the, at the gas station uh, to call his sister to for a letter or calling his sister to pick him up. And uh, this was a gas station. And the FBI, there were four FBI cars. They're watching it when you went out. And uh, one of the FBI agents tried to take him down while he was on the phone, but they did not have a clear shot. They thought, you know, uh, if there's any mistake, I could get her. So he, they, they didn't get him. Uh, so he goes to the, this uh, parking lot. I'm still uh, blindfolded. And uh, he parks over there. And <laughs> he... Opens the, he says, uh, okay, you know, I'm uh, going to take the transfer the money to another car, and uh, you have a uh, hundred. You kick your count up to one hundred. After that, you can remove your blindfold. You can you drive your car. And uh, so I, you know, I start counting. Yeah, I'm counted only up to twenty five, I think, and I hear a shot, bang bang, you know. Uh, you know, I thought maybe he shot me, you know, I'm checking myself here, did I get shot? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> within a the, the second, uh, there's a knock at my door, I said, this is FBI. And what happened is when he got out of the door, FBI was 
they, they had already surrounded him. And uh, so they asked him to freeze and he shot at the FBI. And the FBI killed him uh, right there, in, in not maybe 30 feet from my car. And they, they knocked, FBI agent uh, knocked on my door. So the, he, he said, I'm coming in. So he came in, in the car, he moved, asked me to remove Bradford and drove me back home straight. But I didn't see anything over there. He drove me right away, you know, from there. And uh, so, you know, I come home and there, there's, there's news on every channel, you know, the SkyTel, the uh, executive uh, kill, kidnap, uh, made uh, news all over the country, you know, covered by Washington Post and uh, Wall Street Journal. So it became a case, even India, it appeared in the Indian newspaper. My Somebody called my father, you know, they read in the newspaper. I think this was in it. Uh, uh, Mumbai is there for uh, newspaper. Uh, so it became the, the overall theme was that th this had became a big case at, at the central level. This was the case where the uh, it was a big interest from a uh, Forbes magazine. They got interested, they wanted to do some write up on this, and also uh, they had a lot of other. Uh, SEC people are uh, interested. And uh, uh, by the way, FBI, I, as a result of this, you know, the, uh, I got to know the FBI director. I became an advisor to the FBI director in the telecom issues. Since I was uh, the uh, chairperson of the regulatory and legislative committee, I helped FBI out on some uh, wide tapping uh, 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 legislation. Oh, by the way, when we were, uh, my wife was uh, calling me on the car, the FBI wanted to wiretap the cellular car. But they could not, and the last did not include wiretapping or wireless. So FBI director they called uh, uh, Janet Reno, who was the uh, chief justice. So Janet Reno then gave the permission to the FBI for the wiretapping at that time. So uh, I, I got involved with the FBI director. I became the advisor on uh, uh, taking the sort of the wireless tap issue from the from the industry side to uh, to the Congress. Hey, Jay, uh, uh don't you get any trauma by thinking and by talking all that? Well, that's the that idea. Yeah, she came in. She, or Jackie I came you? out. Okay, my daughter and uh, Jackie, yeah. they they had the trauma. They so I typically don't say anything while she's there. Yeah, so just just hug each other. Well, and I was okay. there. But it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, nice story. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, I think we have time. That's a great story, Jay. Yeah, I, I heard it for the second time. That's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Jay had, Jay had been kidnapped before also. He was kidnapped before. Well, I, 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 I don't think a like, lot of people didn't know about it. That, that's no, I didn't know. I, that's, I didn't the know reason I, that's the reason I raised how uh, the multi... Uh, just because of his contacts and Jackie's... I think they all are... Lucky, you know, yeah. we, we gave uh, up. You know, we had a call from uh Diane Sire, the prime time uh, the new uh, show on ABC. So she wanted to do a show there. We declined. We, we, yeah, we, uh, we I didn't want to, I wanted to play alone. Yeah, I, people called in for movie ride, those kind of things. So we, we didn't want to do anything. Yeah, uh, I think sometimes these things give a lot of trauma for a long time, you know. Yeah. All right, good. All right. Nice seeing you. Take nice. care, Jay. Okay, Jay, yeah. thank you so much. Jackie, hey, nice to see you. And the, uh, happy ending. Oh. Uh, we are doing great. Jackie yeah. is busy. She's uh, teaching her. Uh, yeah, yeah, teaching uh, Spanish to kids. I'm doing a lot of uh, uh, volunteer work with the uh, entrepreneur yeah. uh, organization. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, hey, nice. life is great. Nice. That's great. great. All right. Thank you. 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 Bye bye. Thank bye. you. I think Vijay, Vijay is the moral of the story that you get uh, hijacked or kidnapped to become a millionaire. I mean, 
Asıl sistem ayrı işte çıkıyor karşıya. Yeni ziyade ver round. Go to be a billionaire first. Other way around, other way around. You know, we try to avoid getting kidnapped, but it seems in the US you get kidnapped, you become a millionaire. <laughs> No, it's the other way around. KD, you got it backwards. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Anyway, it's good to hear this. Yeah. yeah. Good hey. to hear this because it also shows us how there are different worlds in this on this planet. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, uh, Serene, yeah. Jackie was saying you something. Bye, ah, Jackie. Huh? Bye, Kiki. Tell me. Sarin. Yes. You're still looking very handsome. Oh, nice of you, man. <laughs> yeah. But there's a story, story behind Jackie, me, and Jay. Remember yeah. That? Where? Yeah, yeah, let me. When I met, met you, she was with me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're still when around. Jay, when Jay met Jackie, I was right there, standing right next to Jay. Yeah. I never know that. I'm still learning that yeah. now. You were with your friend. And what did you tell me? No, 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 no. She said, no, no, no. She said this, is a, this is a girl I want to dance with tonight. <laughs> that was his hey, hey. He said, no, with me, my turn. He said, no, it's yeah. me. Okay. Hey, hey, so, uh, Sarit, I was going to tell the yeah, stories about uh, Mount Rainier. Then uh -huh. I thought, uh, no. What what to happen in Mount Rainier stays in Mount Rainier. Yeah, we are lost. By the way, yeah. we just stayed we just stayed together for two years in a same building, <laughs> same apartment, actually, same room. Yeah, I was a good. cook and dishes Jay did the dishes. <laughs> no, it's not Sandhu. <laughs> yeah, Sandhu did the dishes. <laughs> And oh, right. uh, oh, there's a story about that. Those are, those are good memories. Good memories. Okay. All nice. right. Thanks, okay, Jerry, guys. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Take care. Okay, bye. 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 <laughs> Just Very because good. of you, I signed up five minutes early. So you don't have to. Oh, I know. <laughs> when is KD going to talk to us again? KD? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I, sorry, I've been missing some of these wonderful webinars. <laughs> but then I come from the proletariat, which is the working classes. Okay. And I have to earn my daily bread. Yeah, I know. You got your shawl on too. You got your... <laughs> jola, jola. <laughs> and I haven't been kidnapped so far, so I haven't been, I haven't had a chance to make millions. <laughs> There's still time, Katie. You look good. Yeah, there's still time. You got, you got few, few hundred years ago yet. <laughs> anyway, I think the opportunities in the US are more than in India. Yeah, yeah. probably so. Probably so. I'm glad you came today, Darshan. I, I'm glad Tilak Raj Chaudhary came. That's good. Yeah. That's a... Tilak Raj, so good to see you, partner. And I haven't yeah. seen you in a long time. I still remember vote for Reddy. <laughs> <laughs> vote for Reddy. <laughs> oh, good to see you laughing. Great. Kumar <laughs> is very quiet as usual. Yeah. Tilak, <laughs> Tilak Raj, where are you? Which city are you in? Boss, I'm in Chandigarh now. Oh. Ah. Yeah, I, 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 um, you know, uh, as retired as a managing director of a company, then nine years I was in Dubai. Oh, and then okay. um, I, and four years in Turkey. So then I came back to India and now my daughter is here. She's a doctor. So I'm, I'm in Chandigarh now with her. So, so Tilakrat, when are you going to talk to us about your life? We need, want you to be a <laughs> speaker. You are so uh, interesting. I'm not, a, to... I, I'm, I'm not a good speaker, uh, Rade. You are speaking right now. You are speaking right now. You are speaking, <laughs> right now. You're speaking so me. well right now. You can tell us about Dubai. I will, you can I will, about... I will I'll, I'll not make a promise. But I will think about it and I'll get, get back Please to you. Do. Please I, do. Uh, Tilak, yeah. you have been thinking about it for one year. I talked to you about <laughs> 10 months ago. <laughs> 10 months now ago. I have to do it. I can see you. Raj, as you can see from duration and length of webinars, 
if you say less, we'll all be happy. <laughs> okay, Thank Kiri. You. Thank you. Darshan, Are I you going to tell us about Chandigarh and why the lake? And what was the reason uh, for yeah, the yeah, lake? Yeah. Sure, sure. Anyway, there have been a lot of stories in life. Everybody has got a lot of stories in life. Sure, See, I'll sure. try to, I'll try to, um, you know, uh, sort of write them down in order so that I can try to speak to you. Yeah, but I'll, 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 I'll make an effort. I'll, 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 yeah. I'll tell you what. Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll give you time right now. You got October 29th. That's open day only. <laughs> <laughs> we are we are busy people here. So October 29th. Write it down in your know. calendar. <laughs> October 29th, you are on. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll try. I'll try. No, yeah. don't, there's no try thing here, man. Is, is it yes okay. or no? Man, man, you got it. You got it. Okay. You, won't you, won't leave, leave, you, won't you be the host. I know. I know you won't leave me. <laughs> I won't leave you. No. We would love to hear about you. Okay. We love Thank to hear. You. Please, please share with us. All right. October sure. 29th, Telegram Chaudhary. Yeah. Sounds good. Shamla, 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 the man of few words. <laughs> and Vijay, why were you stopping that lady who was butting into the conversation in I the person who didn't mute because she was telling us what she's cooking for dinner and you should have <laughs> let her carry on. Yeah, well, I wish I knew that. Sorry, sorry, Katie. My mistake. <laughs> sorry about that. Oh my God. Oh, by the way, Shamla Agarwal is the one who mixes with more females than any one of us. And he is right? very silent because he keeps his female contacts totally secret. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> He's a smart man. Yeah. Pili Sadi Wali. Oh, 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 oh. Great. That's great. Well, this is a wonderful thing that you do, Vijay and Sona, and all you people who put this together. Well, the guys who do really, all the work are Sona and Jesse. Really I'm just the there. thread that really the thread that keeps us together. No, Katie, good to see you, buddy. Would like to yeah. see you more often. We try, we try our best. Yeah. Very good. Well, I'm trying not to fade away, but it's an inevitability. <laughs> All right. Next week, next week we have our Sushil Joseph. We'll talk about facelift. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Natural facelift. <laughs> for girls or for us? No, girls are out of line of us. Line of us. <laughs> Vijay Reddy doesn't need that, but the ladies in our group may need it. <laughs> it is for everybody, girls and boys, especially yeah. for girls. Facelift is not for Sona and Vijay, yeah. and certainly not for that doctor in Houston, Shankar. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, great. No. Great to see you, Katie. Tilagra. Yeah, next, Tuesday, next Tuesday will be Sushil Joseph. So yeah. Okay. All right, okay. guys. Adios. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Take care. Bye. Namaskar. Adios. Reluctantly, I'm Katie Kumar. Reluctantly, Ali. I'm signing off. Reluctantly, I'm signing okay, off. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Great, Katie. Bye. bye. Hello, Suresh Sharma. Hi, Katie. Hi. Hi, Suresh. How are you? Good to see Good you. Good to see you with your very pink distinguished. Ball at the back. Very much Jaipur. Very much Jaipur <laughs> style. Pink for Jaipur. <laughs> very good. Bye. Bye, Katie. Shamlal, kya hal hai? Bariya, bariya, bariya. Bariya, wa. Kya rahe ho ek dem Bhagwan Krishna ki tarah. Abhi ki baat hoi thi pehle. <laughs> very good, very good. Kumar, Kumar doesn't say anything. He's muted and gone away, it looks like. Okay. Thaliram is also missing. Okay, gentlemen, good to see all of you. Okay. Nice to, nice to see you all. Very nice to yeah, meet likewise, you all. Likewise, likewise, Suresh. Okay. Bye. Okay. I say, by see the way, you know everything about internet. Uh, Vijay, how do I check out? <laughs> no, you'll see a which, which button right you'll do see I see. press. I'm not on YouTube, so which <laughs> button do I press? There's a bottom right, you'll see a red button saying leave. 
just press on that you'll leave acha i think in india we get it in the top right but no okay. problem I'll look for it okay sorry about that <laughs> no 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 <laughs> we're just trying to be different yeah why not why not purkwa pa purkwa pa all right same thing okay, in french okay bye 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 suresh <laughs>